Good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, joining us today. My name is Tatiana, and I work in the marketing team here at Hornville. Today's webinar on CI relationships and dependency mapping will be presented by my colleague um, Alex Trimble, our senior technical consultant. Before we start, I would like to inform you that delegate audio will be muted during the presentation to facilitate uh, flow and timekeeping. However, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type into the GoToMeeting questions facility on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll answer the, your questions uh, at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend, and I will now pass you over to Alex. Well, hello, folks. My um, name's Alex Trimble. I know I've worked with a few of us that are online here, so hello to you folks. I hope you're keeping well. Some of the others online here I haven't had the pleasure with thus far, but hopefully in the future we will. So I've been with Hornbill for quite a while now, working with the professional services team. I'm working predominantly on support works. Um, and hopefully the session today on relationships and dependency mapping will be of interest. So we're going to be talking around the CMDB, how it's related, and indeed um, what we need to consider by way of how we keep it maintained and how we can get the best use out of it by way of building the relationships and automating some dependencies and impact alerts for, uh, throughout the system. So there are a bunch of questions, of course, and a bunch of considerations that we'd need to care about before we even start to think about software, as in tools which will help us to record our CMDB. So there's all the details of what tools do we have in our system, what is our IT infrastructure looking like, um, what ecosystems can we rely upon to get this information presented to us. So we will be talking predominantly around the support works side of the CMDB, not necessarily outside of support works. However, some questions outside of the support works do need to be considered before we can even cons uh, think about getting our CMDB populated. First one being, what do I have? What is my IT estate? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Um, where is this information coming from? A lot of us will already know this, and that's great. We'll know all about our assets, our laptops, servers, switches, all the other components that make up our, our IT estate. Some of us, unfortunately, don't, and we might need to go and manually collect that. Now, that in itself is a fairly big job, and indeed, as I say, that's nothing to do with support works. So once we do know what we've got, we need to consider what's important to us. Now, we're talking about service delivery. So what's important to us to help us deliver a better service to our business and to our customers? Do we need to know such granular levels of our architecture by way of, is that going to help us provision and service support out to our customers? Once we have an idea of what's important to us, we really need to know how it's going to be maintained. Can we maintain it? What are the processes and all of the other tools outside of support works that are used to assist support works to maintain CMDB? If we put it into our system and we relate it, we have to maintain it. Otherwise, we're going to lose that information and it will not be worth doing it in the first place. So it goes back to the point of what will help our service desk and our business improve the provision of services out to our customers. That's really the main benefit of the CMDB, certainly within support works. So a quick uh, uh, um, catch up on a CMDB. It is a store or importantly here, stores that hold data about our IT organization. So say stores here, and that's, that's quite uh, important to note. It's invariably not just the one system. There's usually several systems that we deploy throughout our network, which assist us in creating the holistic CMDB. Indeed, as well, leading on from that, it's, uh, CMDB is not just an asset register. Back in the 50s and 60s, we had asset registers, maybe written down on paper, maybe in someone's head, with the, um, up, uh, with the upscale of IT organizations and the um, complexities that they started to uh, entail, it wasn't just a case of the standalone systems support our back office. 
the standalone systems support our front office. They're all integrated, they're all highly complex, and so we had to get other ideas into place, other methods into place to allow us to have ownership of that, a bit of sovereignty over our IT estate, and it's this building of the relationships of our IT assets and how they interact that helps us understand CMDB. So support works CMDB. What is in our CMDB? So we know within support works, we've got a bunch of data. We've got uh, um, the organizational structure, invariably imported from something like uh, Active Directory. And that's going to give us access to organizations and sites and customers. We then also have, uh, uh, hopefully, an idea of what I've got in my IT estate. All of our servers, our switches, our laptops, desktops, etc. So it's the relationship between the two components here that's going to help us build our CMDB. So within our network, what tools do I have? So we're going to have support works, fine, that's one of the tools. We're going to have a bunch of deployment systems, our SCCMs, our auditing systems, our uh, um, our tools which help us go and physically find what kit is in our system. So hopefully we can use support works to reflect this, and that's fine. It is, as I say, it's a service management piece. It's, it's often the most visible element of our CMDB between our customers that uh, use it and our technical teams that administer it and maintain it. So once it is all built, we can hopefully use support works to reflect the key elements of our CMDB that assist the service desk to support our customers. So where and how do we get our information? Do we import it? If we import it, where are we importing it from? Do we understand the processes that these other systems employ to go and collect the information? Is our asset tagging process consistent throughout all facets of our organization? Are we going to find duplicated items between the disparate systems? Are the disparate systems talking to each other? If we do import it, then we can set the import routines, but of course, they're only as good as they are set up. And we need to understand the impact of changes to any of the external systems and how that might impact what we're trying to deliver on the service desk. Do we process our changes manually? Arguably, yes, of course we do. We come into support works, we have our services linked to our servers, our servers linked to our organizations and our sites and our customers which are using those services. We're probably going to be manually modifying the um, uh, status and the uh, ownership of these items within support works. Is that going to have an impact from what data has been imported? If so, we need to understand it, otherwise again, the whole structure of the CMDB becomes out of date and therefore not particularly beneficial. Indeed as well, who's responsible for this? It is a full-time job. ITIL will suggest it's at least a one-person job all day, every day. Now often we find that this isn't the case and it's someone else which has got the task of maintaining our CMDB. So whoever, it, whoever is updating the system they should be having an idea of the other tools we have in our, in our organization. What is our ecosystem? Who maintains these other, uh, other tools? When it comes to uh, tools outside of support works, if there are changes to them, is this being reported back to the service desk for us to maintain within change control? And indeed, we need to know what is kept in support works. So a lot of that will be based upon the previous considerations of what do I have, where do I get it from? What's important to me to deliver a good service within our business? Focusing on, of course, improving that service. We're always trying to make things better. Our network will never get simpler. What we're trying to do is make sure that the service delivered out to our customers is as smooth and correct as we can maintain. So switching that back a bit, we know in support works, we have our managed entities organizations, sites, customers, we know that these are related. So we know that customer A works at site B and is part of organization C. Brilliant. Once we've got our understanding of our IT estate, 
we can import that. So we've got our computers, our printers, our switches, phones. All of these would be um, components of or help to assist services that we deliver out to our customers. It's the building of these relationships that's going to start to reap benefits within the service delivery function. So building relationships. Uh, once we've got our items in, it's an asset registry. We know we've got this item. We know we've got those people. That's all fine. But we need to start to build tangible, logical relationships between these um, disparate entities to reap the benefits of the information that that can deliver to us. Once we have built our relationships, what's that going to give us? It's going to let us know who uses stuff, what stuff is used and where it's used. How much kits do we have in any particular location within our organization? How many people use it? It's going to provide information around operational dependencies. So this service is underpinned by this hardware. If this hardware is impacted, might my service be impacted? Any changes in our organization? It allows us to have a much better understanding of how this change is going to impact and affect other areas of our business. How many people will be affected? Is this something that we really want to consider now? Indeed, it provides additional information to the service desk so we can get um, usage of our kit out. We can start to get information around um, manufacturers and hardware information that's mostly affected. We can find services that are often impacted and therefore this is where we can focus our, 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 our efforts to improve those services so that our customers aren't as impacted the next time. And indeed it makes the process of logging calls much easier because we will know related to the person that's contacting us the sites they reside in the assets that they use or own, the assets that are related to their site and indeed the organization. So starting relationships, um, simplest option is of course the person to the kits they use. That's fine, fairly straightforward, reasonably understandable. Now this of course provides knowledge out to the service desk. So we know that our, our customer uses these items, so invariably, they'll probably be contacting us about these items if it's in a break-fix environment. It also allows us to uh, increase efficiency and more accurately log our calls. So simple structure, we have a customer here, Susan. She uses a PC, brilliant. Now, without building that most simplistic of relationships, Susan could contact us and she'll say, my PC is broken. And we'll ask which PC is that? And she'll say, I don't know. At least now with the system built and related, we know that she invariably uses PC 312444. Building on from that, we know that Susan is related to the London site. She works there, as does Alan, as does Anna. The London site uses a shared printer. Everybody has got access to, the, access to this shared printer. So again, when we're logging a call, Alan will come and log a call and say, my printer doesn't work. We know by way of a site that he's probably talking around this print O2 server. So again, it allows us to be more efficient and expedient when we're trying to log, track, and audit our calls. Operational relationships, on the other hand, allow us to describe our IT architecture as opposed to our organizational structure. So here we can see that our ARAS computer business, of which London is a site, it subscribes to print service. So we saw that Susan has got access to Print02, that's fine. Print02 is actually a component of the print service and our organization subscribes to this print service we can see the underpinning components of our print service is, in this instance, one print server and two printers. Great. 
So again, starting to build information and knowledge around our organization and structure. Adding into that a little bit more complexity, we can also see within the structure of the CMDB, Susan is also part of London. London, of course, uses this print service, so this Print02 printer, but it doesn't use a Print01 printer. So just on this simple, and it's still a rather simple structure of the CMDB, we should hopefully see the benefits that's going to give us when we're using support works to log calls for our customers. The ease and speed that support works allows us to um, find items, services or CIs that are related to Susan, her site or her organization, makes the whole process of logging our calls uh, quicker and indeed it gives us that good information about impact within our organization. So what we don't really want to do, although we can, we can set up all of our customers in any one site to say that they use the site printer. We don't need to do that. A simpler structure there would just be to relate to the printer to the site, have all the customers related to that site, and then we can find all the kit for any one customer's site, and again, have a bit of um, a better awareness of what may be impacted, what may be affected when anyone tries to contact us. For some service desks, this is as far as we'll get. Indeed, why enough not? If that's all, all that we care about, then don't add it in. It still goes back to the maintenance of it. If we put it in, we have to maintain it, and it's a fairly big job to maintain it. This sort of level of service delivery might be all that we care about. If we do wish to go further, then obviously within a printer, we might have other components that are related to it. It's spooler. All the sort of components of a printer we could define within our CMDB. We could go down to a terribly granular level if it's going to be of benefit to us and if we trust the information and if we can maintain it. So what can we do with this? As we mentioned, we enhance the call details. We get a lot of information around any one call. This can all be uh, tracked, reported upon. Each item that is ever associated to a request retains that information so we can start to see how many times this item has been impacted. We can start to build availability within our items as well, or availability management within our items. This will start to let us know how we are um, working towards our SLAs of having our services um, available out to our customer base. So we might have a service that's impacted. We may care to track how long this has been impacted, how long it's been down. We may or may not be penalized for our services being down. Building on further within the availability processes of CIs within CMDB, we can start to build events and triggers. So this is where our operational dependencies will come into place. So we can have automation or indeed manual configuration of the status of any one CI. That can in itself, when we change that, modify the status of parent CIs that this is used to underpin. We can have the system automatically log calls, send notifications out to interested parties, and build a whole bunch of event triggers based upon automated processes. So when we come to automated processes, we might have a systems monitor out there which is looking at our underlying hardware. So we might have something that's looking at our print server, making sure that its breach thresholds haven't been um, uh, uh, maxed. So is there enough disk space? Are we overheating? All of these events that might in fact trigger a service outage or impact our service. So we could have a service monitoring tool, looking at our servers, sending a message into SupportWorks. SupportWorks can decipher that message, find out the item that's affected, modify its status to say, my server is impacted. 
that in itself, if we've structured our CMDB so that this server is a component of our print service, that can then trigger a status change to our service. So that when anyone tries to contact us, either our analysts come into SupportWorks or our customers come onto the portal, they would be able to be notified that we already know that this print service might be impacted. Just have a quick look to see how we might go ahead and build these um, dependencies. So initially, if we do have any items that are impacted within the service desk on the SW Today page, again, if our items have been set up to report on availability, we can already be told when we log in that the print service is currently experiencing problems. Our customers can dial onto the self-service portal, and again, if they've got access to the service, they'll be able to see the status of the service, either via the notifications bar or indeed within details relating to the service itself. So building events. We've got three main events that we can set up within the CMDB. First one would be a status change of myself. So my status has changed. What do I need to do about that? Now this might be an automated update from uh, an external source, or it might be us manually going to that particular CI, that particular asset, and changing its status. With our child-related items, a change to its status might impact the parent. So in the instance of our print server, if it's affected, it probably is going to be impacting our service. When it comes to software applications, there would be a child of our server that, that hosts this item. If the software com uh, component is impacted, it might mean that there's a um, impact or a failure of the hardware that supports it. And indeed, further on top of this, we will have event monitoring usually driven via email. Now, event monitoring gives us the options to define certain rules based upon information delivered to us from our external sources. So back to our ecosystem that, that actually creates our CMDB, our SCCMs, our systems monitoring tools. They can send a message through to SupportWorks. We can find out the item that this message is related to. And indeed, we can uh, pick up the message that's delivered from this other tool to let us know the nature of the breach, so the event. So the actions that we can um, base upon these events, we can change our impact. So sorry, we can change our status. So I might be my service and I'm operating fine. My print server's status has now been uh, um, affected. It can come and set my status as a service to be impacted. I can, I can, uh, I can perform a diary update. So each item, as you know, in SupportWorks has got its own uh, diary. So we can come and say this item was impacted at this time with this breach reason. We can follow on. We can log a call from this if you wish. It might be an incident, it might be a problem, depending on the nature of the event, and we can be rather complex in the events that we can track. We can define who we are assigning this to, what the default SLA and general attributes of that call would be. Indeed, as well, we can send notifications out to interested parties. Some of it's built in. As we can see, we can email the um, business owner and the IT owner. We always have a, have a business owner and an IT owner of each item if we choose to configure it. All of these can work in unison or just as separate um, uh, uh, event actions, depending on what we want to configure. If we can't get enough functionality from what's available in the default systems, we can fire off VPME scripts, in which case the world is our oyster. So for configuring these on um, email, 
The script's already there, the processes are already there. What we need to understand is the notification that will be coming from our additional resources. So typically, we'd have a monitoring tools that email into SupportWorks, and we'd have our autoresponder rules in SupportWorks that monitor these emails, match rules based against the emails that we can usually configure from our other tools. And we can pick up items invariably from the subject line to define the CI that's affected, the type of CI, and with a lot of tools, the value from that breach. So for example, our email that's sent from our sys monitoring tool might say, question mark event handler, the item, the event, and the value. So within our event monitoring processes, we can pick that up. So we can have a rule that says, if my HSL UK switch 001 item has a packet loss event and its value is 95, then I'm going to do something. That in itself, as I say, that can drive the um, availability notifications of our services and CIs within the system which gives our analysts and our customers a bit of awareness that we already know about this, that might hopefully reduce the number of calls that we have relating to this uh, uh, item, and indeed allow us to swiftly get on and go and fix these issues. So these are all great levels of automation that we can build in. It's all up to us to build them. The main thing that we have to concern ourselves with is the maintenance of what we put into our systems. If we put it in, we have to maintain it, otherwise it's not going to be worth putting it in in the first place. We also need to understand what is it we're trying to achieve by way of the service delivery that we're going to base upon a CMDB. If we don't really care about certain um, items or events, don't map them. It just adds to the complexity and the overall management headache that it can be to maintain it. Indeed, as well, the ownership of these processes, it is a big job. It is difficult. The nature of our organizations and our IT structure changes a lot. So we need to have someone or some team of people which are au fait and familiar with all of these processes to be able to correctly maintain and upkeep or seem to be. So that's round about it for me. I hope you found this somewhat um, beneficial. It's only open it up to any questions that anyone may have for me. Okay, so we have a question here from Richard Moore. Please can we confirm the differences between child and parents? Um, yes, so this will be a logical um, structure. So let me just pop into support works here. So let's say, and I'm keen to keep everything service centric. So let's look at our services. I'm going to have a look at my technical services. So here we can see we have um, a couple of technical services built in. We have a internet access, fine. Internet access here, our parents could be another service. So on a new starter process, we're going to be offering out internet services to our new starters, so that's fine. On a child, this is going to be, if we refer back to our, our, our print service and our underpinning components, this is going to be the hardware that's used to support it. So within the hardware, we know that here's our switch, switch 001 that is used to support as a child of our internet service. So if our child item is affected, there may be reasons or, or it may have portent that the service itself is affected. The parent and child dependencies, it does come down to what we understand within the system. We wouldn't invariably import these. These are usually a manual process to go and configure. 
certainly when it comes to the managed entities the parent to child relationships between organizations and customers and sites that's automated for us by the import processes the relationships between our IT estate the services the CIs that's for us to maintain and build so certainly change control comes here so if our switch is ripped out of site number one and moved to site number two we'd expect that to be under change control we'd be able to understand the impact as to which customers and services might be affected by that and indeed we'd want to then go and baseline our item and reconfigure it with its current uh, status Um, so from Michael Everson, um, would it be possible to automate the import of that user interaction? Um, at present, in support works, no. Um, but coming to a service desk near you soon, there may be a productized version of it. Once or twice we've been asked to automate this. Um, and there is in development at the moment a process to automate it. Now there are difficulties with it because if we were to have a um, an automated process, A, it goes against ITIL. ITIL will suggest that we will have awareness of everything that we put into our CMDB. Hence, everything that we import does go through our stage items. From stage, we'll do a comparison between what's in stage and what's in our CMDB. And if there are any differences, it will highlight them. We should, according to ITIL, understand those differences and agree to them before we push them into the CMDB. So as to whether the automated process will be productized, I don't know. I would like functionality in there to say things like, yeah, do go and automate processes for these types, desktops, laptops. Great. We don't really care about that. Servers. Yeah, we might care about those. If we automate that and there's been a change of its RAM or operating system or any other attributes that are rather important because it's a server, do we really want them to go straight into the CMDB? Would we not rather have an understanding of how and where these have changed and be able to ratify it back to the change request and all the fine detail that we attribute to it um, to get a better understanding of what's going on in our network? If we automate it, then it kind of becomes a, a asset register again because we're not having great amounts of control about what is within our CMDB. However, back to the point in question, there may soon be a process for automated imports. It's been asked a lot by a lot of people and it is being considered at present is not available. So how do you import multiple relationships with hardware software CIs? As I say, there is no processes, Richard, um, about automation of relationships between CIs. It can be done, but there's nothing that's default or out of the box. It all needs to be bespoke and considered. Indeed, as well, we need to um, take a step out of support works again and find out where are these relationships built. If they're able to be imported from, a, from another source, does that mean that we're managing our CMDB in that other source? So at present, there is nothing that allows us to build those relationships. It can be done, but it needs to have a reasonable amount of consideration of where's the source data, where's it coming from, is it trusted, what do we need to do about changes to relationships, as in, again, our switch here was in site A. It's now been moved to site B. If we import that, do we baseline the item to reflect that change? Do we not baseline it? There's a fair bit of work and understanding before we click go on any import. Uh, and Ty, um, how do you display a resilient partner relationship when neither is the parent or the child? Hmm, yes, um, resilience, always difficult. Um, Redundancy and resilience within our um, CMDB structure is difficult to map. It's difficult to map in any CMDB tool. Now, bearing in mind SupportWorks has got a CMDB. It's for service um, uh, management. There are other tools out there which are specifically and, uh, and primarily deal with CMDB um, uh, configuration. Our tool, it can have difficulties in defining a resilient architecture. So where we might have print service, which is underpinned by server A or server B, we would clearly have some sort of resilience built in, some redundancy built in. So if server A or server B goes down, a print service can load balance switch over to some other architecture that supports it. It can be tricky to build that in. 
certainly when it comes to ISDN lines, uh, WAN links between our disparate uh, um, sites, this can be rather tricky to build into the system in a logical and representative manner. So unfortunately for that, there isn't a very nice you do it like this. There are one or two options that can be done. Um, again, it would really depend on how do we need to describe our network and our topology. Oftentimes, there's a way to reflect that within the system, but building resilience in and having things like our automated event triggers to um, uh, identify this can be quite difficult. Um, so again, Michael, uh, you have another CMDB system. Yes, indeed, it would kind of be expected uh, uh, to have one. Um, so it should be a copy of the existing CMDB. Um, yes, you kind of uh, 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 would have a, if you have got your CMDB defined in another system, and we're trying to replicate that in support works. You need to wonder why we might be doing that in, in, in its entirety, because that's just duplicating the point. However, of course, the service management system does need to have awareness of our CMDB structure. So if it is defined in another CMDB system, they should, and we manage that, then there should be ways to be able to import that detail. And indeed, those relationships, going back to your previous question, um, uh, within support works to reflect it. The main point there is, is it being managed somewhere? What we don't want is our automated tools just to put information into a CMDB without us understanding why it's been put in there. And indeed, the great points of um, understanding the change and impact of those changes within the CMDB structure. Um, again, back to uh, Richard. Yes, you can import them directly. Uh, you can import relationships into Config Rally. Quite right, that is the table, the, the primary table that builds the relationships between our CIs. Of course, from there, let's look at our switch 001 again. Switch 001 is, the, uh, is related to organization A and site B. Um, it's also got um, uh, parent dependencies onto this service. If we just insert into Config Rally, we're constantly increasing those relationships. What if this switch is now no longer used to support that service? We'd have to go and delete the record in Config Rally before we recreate the new relationship. On that as well, there's uh, elements that we'd really want to put into place against the switch to say that I used to support this service. I'll baseline that. I now support this service. And here's the new configuration of it. So yes, theoretically, you can keep adding to Config Rally. But without tidying up after ourselves, we'll soon get a very scatter graph network topology and indeed a relationship um, a structure that doesn't necessarily reflect our true structure of the CMDB. So, yeah, you can, but we need to do it carefully. OK, thank you very much, Alex. I can't see any more questions coming through at the moment. Um, so. Thank you again for taking us through uh, that presentation. I hope every found, everyone found it useful. Um, if you have any more uh, questions, uh, you can contact um, us directly or contact your relationship manager, and we'll get back to you with um, answers on that. Uh, so just to let you know, the recording of this webinar will be available um, today on the forum, as well as we'll email you the link to that. And um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us today and um, have a good uh, remaining of the day. Thank you. Bye. Cheers, folks.